good afternoon my friends today we will study our fourth experiment that is to prepare and standardize sodium hydroxide solution so our objective today is the preparation of sodium hydroxide solution then standardization of that so we know the basics of uh, the standardization that why we need to standardize the sodium hydroxide that we will discuss while doing the experiment also let us divide this experiment into certain steps so step number one is first we have to prepare the sodium hydroxide solution that is 0.1 normal to 50 ml so you can see uh, that i have already calculated the molecular weight for sodium hydroxide now by applying this formula by using this n is indicating the normality weight is w is indicating the weight of sodium hydroxide this is the equivalent weight of sodium hydroxide and the volume in which we have to make by putting this value because we know this normality is 0.1 so we have put the value 0.1 equivalent weight and molecular weight in case of sodium hydroxide is 40 so we have put the 40 and volume we have to make to 250 so we have put 250 so finally when you will calculate the w it will come 1 gram so we have to take 1 gram of sodium hydroxide and it has to be dissolved to 250 ml of water so this is our first step let us do this step by having the experiment ok sir now we will start this balance this is the digital balance and now we, are, we have to weigh sodium hydroxide so you can see this is a sodium hydroxide pallet so you can see these pallets it will look like this you can have the clear picture it is looking like this now this balance has started we have to take the butter paper then over the butter paper just we have to tear it it will become zero now we have to weigh one gram as per our calculation we have to weigh one gram so we will take one gram it is 1.58 so we will just take it back it is 0.95 that is approximately up to we can say it is 0.96 now just we will take this this is approximately 1 gram and we will dissolve it into or we have taken into beaker we will off it then we add the distilled water in this and we will dissolve it we have already added the water in this now we will dissolve it the pallet will dissolve we will just we have to shake it until it dissolves we have added 100 ml of distilled water in this now we have to make to 250 because this 1 gram has to be dissolved into 250 ml of distilled water so 1 gram already we have added now we will add up to 250 we will make the volume this is a wash bottle by this we will add this distilled water then final volume was made to 250 now this is 250 just we will dissolve it to get the solution of sodium hydroxide now our sodium hydroxide solution is ready we will just keep it aside for few minutes step 2 that is the preparation of oxalic acid solution this oxalic acid solution we are considering here oxalic acid solution as a primary standard as uh, you know the molecular form formula for the oxalic acid is COH, COH dot 2 s 2 2 water of hydration is there water crystallization is there this is the calculation to calculate the molecular weight of oxalic acid you can see the 2 carbons are there and 6 oxygens are there 6 hydrogens are there when you will calculate it it will come to 126 it has 2 replaceable hydrogen you can see it is having 2 replaceable hydrogen so it will be divided by 2 which is equivalent weight is 63 now for calculation of 0.1 normal 100 ml oxalic acid solution as we know this is the primary standard solution so it required to be prepared in the volumetric class so we are going to prepare it into 100 ml volumetric class 
so that is why we have kept the volume to 100 ml so we have to require to calculate its weight how much weight we have to carry of oxalic acid so from this calculation we will get the weight of oxalic acid that is 0.63 gram and that is how we have to weigh this point okay. so uh, this is our instrument uh, that is balance room here uh, we have taken the this is our balance this is our weight box this is the fractional weight box this is the weighing bottle and this is the 100ml volumetric flask in which we have to prepare this oxalic acid solution this is the funnel we have kept it here so whatever material we have to weigh first of all we will take this material into weighing bottle so you can see this is the oxalic acid uh, reagent bottle so we are taking the oxalic acid from this and we will transfer this into weighing bottle we have directly transferred or we can say we have transferred the oxalic acid in excess amount so we have to weigh 0.63 gram that is 630 milligram so we will keep this bottle at the left hand side of the pan of this balance this is the analytical balance we will keep it here and we, the respective weights will be kept at the right hand side so you can see here just you will see we will just unarrest this balance then you will see where the pointer is going if the pointer is going in against that means the weight of this reagent bottle is still it is higher we have to add the weight when it will be balanced then what we have to do we have to uh, we will keep it the weights we will keep adding the weights here until we will get the balance in the weights so we will keep the weights here itself we will just again we will pick it up again it is showing it is more then we will cautiously we will keep the weights here when this string will go that side that means the our weight is done or it is higher than that so what we will do after that 630 milligram of weight will be removed from here and then we will transfer the weight transfer this powder just by tapping into the volumetric flask like that we will transfer it then again we will wait so we will have the two readings one before transfer another after transfer then we will just will check it whether this balance is coming at the proper position so after transfer whatever the compound we have got just will note the reading of our weight that weight will be minus from that we will get the exact weight of oxalic acid transferred so we will take one we have just taken for example so we will just take it for the sake of the example that we have taken 0.6 somewhat it is just let us see and we will see in the lab itself now we will dissolve it with distilled water we have added the distilled water now we will make the volume up to 100 ml before 100 ml we will just dissolve it so that completely it get dissolved then with the help of this wash water we are transferring the distilled water now you can see we have transferred the distilled water here itself now it has made the volume now we will just shake it so that it completely get dissolved we will just analyze it whether it is dissolved or not then we will keep it here so that it will dissolve meanwhile we will just rinse this funnel and keep it over the burette then we will be in the burette we will fill the sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide solution will fill here actually the solution can be drawn here now we will keep the now this 50 ml burette is filled and this is our oxalic acid solution is ready this is our oxalic acid solution now with the help of volumetric pipette you can see this the volume of this volumetric pipette is 20 ml so we will just pipette the 20 ml of oxalic acid solution now from this volumetric flask you can see mark is here so up to this we will 
keep it then finally we will transfer it into conical flask now we have transferred this material into conical flask this oxalic acid we have transferred fully transferred now this oxalic acid solution is there now we will add the indicator here now you can see this is the phenolphthalein indicator we will add just two drops of this indicator with the help of this pipette we will take this indicator we will add one two two drops we have added and finally we will titrate it until the color changes to pink now we will titrate it with sodium hydroxide in the burette we have the sodium hydroxide in this conical flask we have the oxalic acid and indicator and the base of the this uh, viewer stand we have made the white so that the color can be differentiated if any color change is observed we can you can see on addition itself the color is obtaining isn't you can make it closer so that color can be visualized you can see on addition itself color is coming so just we have to continue the addition with swelling until it has a permanent pink color or just pink thing is obtained up to that we have to tighten it just we will continue the addition till we have the end point we will do it like this you can have this that now you can see it has obtained the pink color now we have stopped the titration we have the pink color so this is just we note the end point it is coming around 23.5 23.5 five ml it is so we will note that reading now we will repeat this uh, titration thrice again we will take this oxalic acid solution 20 ml we will keep it and we will transfer it to conical flask then again we will turn, we will add indicator then again we will titrate it until it obtains the same color so we will have the idea from the first titration the end point is coming around 23 and half that means at around 20 ml we will slow the titration so that we can come to the end point nearly so it will be repeated with this and another conical flask similarly so that we get the concordant value now the titration that we have already seen we have obtained the pink color that can be written in this in such table form that is the observation table in that we have written the first thing is volume of oxalic acid that we have prepared the same volume in this 20 20 ml so we have done it twice so we have written it 1 2 3 20 20 ml we have taken then initially we have started with the burette 0 ml then at 23.5 ml we get the end point so we have written 23.5 then again we have taken the oxalic acid then again we have titrated the again the reading has come out that we have noted this is nothing but the difference of these two readings then again we have filled the period to 50 ml so if that is why here it is 0 then we have got this reading so we have we are getting these two concordant values that is why we have written its end point is 22.5 so likewise we have to draw the table in the observation table observation copy at the blank point page of the uh, observation notebook you have to draw this table and here we are using the oxalic acid as a primary standard that we are using and we are titrating with the sodium hydroxide the reaction the basic behind that is that this is a strong base and this is a weak acid that we are using it is titrated with this forming the disodium oxalate and the water molecule so you can see the salt that is going to form out is it is a salt of strong base and the weak acid so in the case of strong base and the weak acid the indicator that we use to select that will be of basic side that is why we are selecting a phenolphthalein as the indicator because the range of phenolphthalein is found to be 8.3 to 10 so here we are using the sodium hydroxide as a titrant so the automatically the end point will go toward the basic side so that is why phenolphthalein is used as an indicator.